Hi, my name is Phil Fearon. Uh, today I'm going to give a quick overview of Sketchpath. Um, so we've got Sketchpath open here, and what I'm going to do is open an XML source file immediately into Sketchpath. Um, and that this is it. On the left-hand side here, we've got a uh, element tree view. So it allows me to quickly get a, get a view of the hierarchy of the XML source. Uh, so we see we've got a books list, um, document element, and a books container element for a number of items. And as you can see, as I select items in the tree view, uh, they're shown in the raw text view. And also on the right hand side, I can see all the key nodes for that item element. So um, I can also click, obviously, in the raw XML view, and that allows me also to navigate through and that's synchronized again with the, with the tree view on the left and the element nodes view on the right. Uh, and you'll see how they're highlighted as I select either uh, attribute or a uh, text node. So um, also I can make changes to my XML if I like, even though um, XML editing isn't really the main feature of this, I can quickly put in items and what I have to do is actually do a refresh to make sure that that is loaded as far as the XPath evaluation is concerned. So now it also helps with the colorization. So now you can see that I've added a comment to this XML document. And if I wanted to, I could also save that change um, through the uh, save button here. Um, but at the moment, I'll just carry on going through some of the other Sketchpath features. So um, we, we've got a grid view, which effectively just gets rid of your raw XML view to allow a, a bit of a cleaner um, view, but it doesn't give quite as much detail as you would get from looking at the raw XML. Um, so we've also got a couple of help pages, um, but really, if you want um, more help, you should go to the Sketchpath um, web page. Uh, and also there's some uh, XPath help, but again, the, the best resource here really is the, the W3 specification from, from which this text was actually uh, downloaded. So um, we've also got a settings page because there are a number of settings changes that you can make to uh, Sketchpath, and these settings are saved in between your sessions. Um, at the moment, I've got the URI resolver pane Open. So this allows Sketchpath to resolve uh, URIs um, for uh, DTDs. So if there are DTD declarations, um, if it will um, make sure that those can be resolved properly to DTD files that are hopefully located lo locally, but they will be downloaded for you if there is not a local instance. Um, and we've got a namespace uh, resolver here also, so that allows you with your um, collection or document functions to uh, be able to uh, resolve nodes, uh, namespaces outside of the XML file that is currently loaded in Sketchpath. Um, address bar, just um, because Sketchpath allows you to um, put in settings here, um, this is basically just a history um, list which you can modify if you need to. Um, we've also got a recent files list which is re reflects basically what is shown from the recent files as I'm, I'm showing you here now. Okay, uh, file paths. Um, this is how Sketchpath knows where to look for XSD files or for um, DTDs. So, because um, like normally it will look in the most obvious place, so that would be um, where your XML source is actually located. Um, but if it can't find the appropriate file there, it will continue to search based on the hints included in these settings. Okay, um, XPath processor, a Sketchpath supports both uh, 1.0 and 2.0 versions of XPath. Um, the 1.0 version is um, a .NET implementation, so it's using the standard .NET framework. And the 2.0 implementation is from a Saxon 
at the moment uh, it shows just Saxon B here uh, because I haven't got installed um, Saxon, uh, the schema aware version of Saxon, but that is available and you can just uh, plug that in if you are to, were to download it from the uh, Saxonica uh, website. Um, we've also got a, a variety moving on because, uh, well, I'll quickly go back actually because we've got some font size settings and also there are uh, file encoding settings that you can set up for Sketchpath. Um, this would allow you to um, change the encoding for the input and output, but uh, to be honest, um, the auto mode is very effective at picking up the encoding, and you shouldn't normally need to look at this, but you are able to override it if you need to. Uh, pane options, I, I'll show you this quickly. So as you can see, Sketchpath has a number of ways of uh, rearranging the panes within the application. So at the moment, I've got it set with the main XML window and uh, the XPath window is in the bottom left. But I could um, shuffle things around a bit if I wanted to show XPath on top. Uh, I'll quickly um, do that. So that shows that we've got a bit of XPath on top. I'll just show you some. So just to prove that that's the case. But if I want to go back to my pane options and go back to... Uh, X path and bottom left, I just revert back to there. Okay, um, so that is the the main panes that you have um, at the top. Um, I've explained a few of the features already. Um, I should show you the environment manager. So here we have two namespaces. Um, we've got one here um, that is actually declared within the XML source. This this other namespace has been, this is one of the settings that I was showing you earlier in the settings pane, and that allows me to um, still use that namespace when I'm referencing external uh, documents to the, the doc or the uh, collection functions of XPath. Um, you also see that um, in schemas, it's identified that there is a books schema that is declared um, here and this tick here um, also tells me that it's actually found that reference schema in the uh, file system and therefore it will allow me to do a validation and it's come up green here so it tells me that this is valid and the nice side effect of this is now that whenever I click on an element um, up here I will also see as well as seeing the element name I will see its type so if I click on um, language, for example, it shows that the element is it's a language element, but its type is defined in the XSD as language type, and it, it is a string type. That's its base type. Um, likewise, price is actually a money type, but it's uh, based on a decimal type. Um, so that can be quite useful. Okay, I did mention earlier that... Um, uh, Sketchpath supports two versions of XPath, and the way you quickly um, change between your XPath versions is just down here, and you can select version 1 or version 2. So let's go to version 1. So it re evaluates it using the version 1 uh, XPath processor. Um, so the settings actually just change what your, your default is when you start Sketchpath. And what else should I show you? Okay, also in that drop down list, you will have seen that there's a regex item. So if I select that, that now turns this um, expression editor into a regular expression editor. So I can type in a regular expression. For example, if I wanted to look at uh, uh, TR, so I've got no, um, let's just try that again. Um, something that I will actually get some hits on. Okay, so this shows the hits for this XPath expression uh, down here. And it's quite useful because it will also show me what the... Um, whenever you move around in an XML document in Sketchpath, this bit here on this pane shows you what the XPath location is of that um, node that you have selected. So as we move through, we can see exactly where we are in the document. And of course, it's also highlighted in your tree view 